So we got a tree. Its trunk is in Middle Earth. Its roots are in the underworld. And its branches are in heaven. So you've got heaven, which is Asgard, Osgar, Osgo. You've got Middle Earth, Mid Midgo, and you've got hell, the underworld. So the so the three primary animals, I guess, is the is the dragon, Nidhogga, who resides on the amongst the roots at the very bottom of the tree. You've got the You've got the deer feeding off the branches on the Middle Earth. You've got the animal kingdom that feeds off the fruits and the, the branches on the ground level. And you've got the eagle in the top of the tree. So you've got those, I guess you've got uh, the eagle, the deer and the dragon, you could say, are the three main animals. You could say the fourth animal would be the squirrel. Rattlestock, who passes messages between the dragon, Nidhogga, and the eagle. And then you've got the, in the third eye of the eagle, you've got the falcon. So you've got two birds actually. That's your three main birds. So the, the dragon is the primordial dragon power, the serpent power who lives at the base. The eagle is the power of heaven, the power to raise up into the sky and get perspective, to see things from above. And then you've got the, you've got the middle kingdom where the tree is, um, is food for other beings in the form of leaves and fruits. Where the, where the tree is continually providing leaves, food, food for the people of Middle Earth. Um, well, every, every aspect of the tree, every animal, every aspect has a teaching. There's a teaching within each part of the tree. You could take the squirrel. The squirrel is, is said to pass messages between the dragon and the eagle. But the messages that it passes said to are said to uh, be an antagonistic the eagle is antagonistic to the dragon so the squirrel is always winding up the dragon or the eagle the messages he passes are, are like teasing so you'll say one thing to the eagle and um, you'll say one thing to the dragon but he twists the story to accentuate this antagonistic relationship You've actually got the same in uh, in the Vedic animals. You've got uh, Garuda the eagle is the enemy of the snakes. It's like, um, and you've got it in real life. There's many many birds can are good at catching snakes. Uh, and many hawks can catch snakes. Peacocks kill snakes. The the energy of the reptile kingdom and the bird. They kind of um, antagonistic, even though they kind of related, because birds are really reptiles. Yeah. So you could say, mixing up the two systems of of the Vedic and Nordic, you could say the dragon is the lower chakra, when you would equate to the Kundalini the serpent power. You could, and the eagle is the third eye and and the higher chakra. So there is that antagonism is always going on. Because you've got, uh, we've got our, our raw animal power. That's very selfish, just based on <clears throat> selfish gratification. And then you've got the higher self, always trying to modify this animal behavior to make it more, um, to introduce more human or compassionate or spiritual ideas to modify the raw animal behavior of the of the root chakra, the dragon that just wants to it's predatory, isn't it? It's cold, cold blooded predatory animal, has no feelings, has no compassion, has no morals. But then the eagle has the overview of the whole situation. 
the higher the higher self is antagonistic to the lower self in a way. The principles of the two are in contradiction. So, so that is one of our dilemmas as a human, isn't it? To, to bring these two forces together. We don't want to lose our dragon power because we become weak. But we don't want to become predatory because we're humans. We have the potential for much more than to be a predator. So that's a clear lesson you can get from the Yggdrasil, but that's just a very basic but ev lesson. Everything is in the Yggdrasil because it's the world tree. It's a symbol of the world, it's a symbol of the universe, so anything that's in the universe exists within the tree. So the runes, like anything else, exist within the tree. But the runes, as mentioned in the, in the old stories and the old uh, writings on Yggdrasil, they say the runes are... Well, you've got to get into the norns. The three norns who carve the runes into the roots of the tree. And the runes are said to control destiny. The destinies of the various beings that live in the tree. The destinies are written down in runes and carved onto the roots of the tree. That's the story. <clears throat> so runes are can, what control our destiny. Well, only a shaman could probably recognize a real shaman, so it's a bit of a predicament. <laughs> um, well, you'd have to become a shaman to recognize a shaman. So you just have to rely on your integrity. If you want to be, if you want the truth, if you really do want what's real, you will meet a shaman. If you don't want to, if you want. If you want a, a mimic of the world, if you don't want the real world, you don't have integrity, you won't meet a real shaman, I suppose. That's one way you could you could Like say. I said before, the internet is a copy. All technology is a copy. It's, it's imitation. It's an imitation of what really exists energetically. So the internet, the physical internet that's now been created is, is a copy of an invisible internet, an energetic internet, the internet that links all beings within the, in the universe, in the tree, on the world. There's a, there's a real internet. This electronic internet is a copy. We, we are all linked. We are all able to communicate. And um, I don't believe real knowledge is passed on via the I imitation internet. I don't. I think all people get is a copy of knowledge. They they get an imitation version of what is real that somehow tricks their mind into thinking they've got what's real, but all they have is an imitation. I don't. I don't believe the real knowledge is ever going to be taught by electronic equipment. So what what can people learn from watching your watching your films? God knows, I don't know. Whatever they, <laughs> we'd have to see, won't we? <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe they get an idea that there is a shame. Shaman is, shamanism is possible, and um, they might seek it. I have no idea. I don't know. It's a difficult question. <laughs> it comes back to the same thing. I don't believe knowledge. Knowledge is what people believe knowledge to be. It's not something that can be transmitted at the flick of a switch. You can't. It's not available at the flick of a switch. It's not available on demand. I can't give you knowledge on demand. Knowledge is a living. It's a living force. <laughs> Then I caught a glimpse.
in the green wood road. He's dressed in every shade of green, such a splendid sight as you've never seen. I thought I caught a glimpse of him.